So since since we are doing our review episode for February fifth, you know it's probably worth mentioning that if you've watched we, this, do we not introduce ourselves anymore? Well, we, we're going to introduce ourselves. I don't see yeah, sense but, of being I mean, we're doing the They thing know who the we video. are. But, okay. So, sure. so since we're about to do our review episode for February fifth, I, I want to take two seconds and point out that yes, I am aware that we could hit the record button, you know, walk around the table, <laughs> and and then cue and start recording where people didn't see that. Um, I had a friend of mine point out that that was entirely possible, and I'm like, no, no, I understand that that's possible. Right. But that's not um, the point. The point was to, to kind of point out that it's an unedited video. One of the things that you get from us watching us on YouTube, besides a couple of minutes of, of content of us chatting before we actually get into recording the, the audio podcast portion, is just a little, like, kind of a, a peek behind the scenes as we're chatting for our episode. Also, Lady banter. our lovely faces. And Look at that. Faces on shirts. It's like, yeah. it's like caption within caption, picture you know, in picture. I'm 48 years old. I'm almost 49 years old. I have never had my face on a shirt before. I've had logos of things I worked for. I've had custom made things. I've never had my face on a shirt before. It's... I, I still think, think I still think you and I. Well, these should be the the merchandise for sale. I, I I really think that you and I need one. I need just your face over my entire, and you need one with my face, and, and that way we can be confusing. Okay. So by the way, <laughs> you you can get the this on a pillowcase. I'm not gonna do that. Maybe the bedspread, but not the pillowcase. I'm just saying I, I can't. I don't know if I could sleep on David's face. That might make me uncomfortable. Just roll over. Ah! Oh God. My demonic red <laughs> face. It's more of a more of a peachy red, peachy pink, right? Is that a red? It's red, dude. It's red. Okay. It's red. I don't know why you were red. I was blue. I didn't figure that out. I'm demonic, and you're. I figured Ernie did like a red versus blue thing, like a Halo thing. I figured that's what he was doing. I think he was like Garen's really cool, and really red. <laughs> it's kind of angry and red. I don't know. Which is true. Yeah. Ernie, anyway. Ernie, Ernie Suggs. Go look up Ernie Suggs on Facebook or online. He's actually got some pretty cool art. So yeah, yeah. And he's a good friend of mine. He's my uh, my drunken drunken Spanish sailor. So so Who's additionally, additionally, if you really want to do art for us and logos and things like that, I mean, obviously we're going to make use of them. Sure, and, absolutely. And yeah. on top of that, we'll you know credit you if you want to sure. use right. us as an engine to get your art out there. We can do that. All right, so I guess let's get into... This is the February 5th review episode. Yeah. So. Sports Center. Hey, guys, and welcome to a... Oh, you're recording already. Yeah, yeah, you just love screwing up the intro. <laughs> uh, welcome to the February 5th review episode of the, the Printed Metal Podcast. Podcast. I'm David. And I'm Gary. And he's way too excited this morning. Way too We're going to take away his sugary drink. This was, I haven't had sugar down. I have orange juice. It's not, it's orange natural, juice has sugar. Natural sugar high. So, yes, um, plus the 40 cups of sugar the 40, they added to the... 40 cups of sugar. In, it says like, no sugar added when I bought this. It says no sugar added. Is it the lie on the, the end of the... We lied. We actually added. And sugar. President Trump's really that orange. Oh, God. All right. So, we're just going <laughs> to... <laughs> I broke it. 49 seconds in, I broke it. Uh, okay. All right, guys, so really cool week. Um, this is a good week, yes. I completely agree. Yeah, this is a good week. Um, and honestly, I was not disappointed in anything. I mean, I read stuff I wasn't going to read, so. Well, let's, let's, let's get into that. it. So, Start with Aftershock. Yeah. The man who effed up time. How did so, I talk you into this? So, How did so I do it? if you go back and you listen to our previous episode for last week, this isn't on there for me. Mm, nope. And and actually, the way that you talked me into it was John Lightman. Oh yeah, and that's Outer Darkness. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I fell absolutely in love with Outer Darkness. It was <laughs> a fantastic read. Oh uh, my god! Uh. And um, sorry about that loud clunk. Everybody listened to us on audio only. So uh, um, so the main character, he is a lab assistant. Who should be? Who should be, should be in charge of the lab because yeah. he's that bright? He just couldn't essentially couldn't afford to pay for, um, pay for the uh, school. Uh, so he wor he's working in this place where they figure out that they can. They've been go back in time. on the time machine. Yeah. So like you do. Uh, the the professor in charge goes back in time to the Mesozoic area era and pulls a flower out, 
You know, because remember... That you, has been extinct on the planet ever since. Right. So, uh, just remember, you can't go back in time, because you're, if you do anything, you breathe funny, it's a butterfly effect, you can destroy everything. So... I mean, I still think it would have been a clever thing if, like, the first guy that went back just cut a fart, and he came back <laughs> forward in time, and everything was different. Everything was different, yeah. So, he... So, he goes... So, he, he basically is, like, he's, he's the monkey for the office, right? So... Uh, the other guy wow. who was in school with him. That's a good description. The monkey for the office. Well, the janitor. They call it the like janitor boy. It's like, no, he's not a janitor. He's the lab assistant. But lab assistants, they're the monkey of the office. They're the ones who go for they this, go for that. got work, yeah. They got work. And that's what it is. But he's resentful, and, and he's the guy who, the guy who's, who's, who's supposed to be nasty to him. They were in class together. They were roommates together. Uh, this is the same guy who also now has his girlfriend. I mean, it's bad, right? Yeah. So um, he goes to the bar getting drunk, and this stranger walks up. Oh, bad day. He says, yeah, bad day. And they start talking, and you realize it's actually him in a hoodie from talking to himself from the future. Don't know where in the future, but we know it's the future. So basically he says, listen, what if you just go fix it all? Just go back and repair the damage. Here, take this laptop. <laughs> so he goes back to the office. He then figures out what he needs to do, downloads what he needs to do, and then he goes back in time just for... Oh, just was a week. A week. A week. Just a week. What damage can I do in a week? Comes back, and then, of course, all oh, the whole timeline is effed up. Well, he so he went back, and he took the laptop, and he presented notes that then was what made time travel possible. Right. Which then will get him grants, and will get him right. attention, and the girlfriend. And right. He, he sends her flowers, and then when he goes back to what's his normal timeline, which I don't know why you wouldn't have just lived out the week. Yeah, and then that too would have made sense. Yeah, I, I yeah. can lay low anywhere for a week. Yeah. So, but which is, I mean, again, it's a plot device, I guess. Uh, well, would he two of you then? Right, and then one of me would go back in time, and I would live forward from. Oh, that yeah, well, point. good point. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah. that does make sense. Yeah. See, I can make time travel work. Um, okay. So. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, Back to the Future doesn't happen if I'm there. Um, so you trip the guys, he runs past you. Right, yeah. <laughs> and done. So um so yeah, so, <laughs> so he completely screws everything up. And and he's getting chased by a samurai riding a stegosaurus <laughs> in a world where Abraham Lincoln the fourth is president. president yeah. Or no king. King, king president. King. King King Abraham Lincoln the fourth. What he also finds out is that he himself went back and stopped the Kennedy, stopped the uh, Lincoln assassination, killed, um, killed Booth, and stopped the assassination. So, which I mean, hey, it's a great idea, but that set about a horrible chain of events that just went crazy. And and so these robots, <laughs> the time cops show time up cops like show you up. do, and, and say. You've got one week to go back in time because we have baby you. And we will kill you if you don't. Yeah, as, as an infant. I mean, it's it's insane. So, I, 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 this was amazing. Really can't wait to see what happens the rest of the, the, rest of the book. So, if, if issue one is this good, I'm hoping the rest of it will be just as good. I see no reason why so, it wouldn't be. Because Outer Darkness was, every Still issue was is. phenomenal. Still is. <laughs> yeah, so. I swear he took a small hiatus to do this. Yeah. And... But yeah. this is Aftershock, where uh, image, image is after his uh, Outer Darkness. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Next, we have Butcher Paris Part 3. So, we get the backstory on the, the, the murder. A backstory on the, um, uh, the serial killer, uh, Marcel. You find out that he was in the trenches in 1917 and uh, winds up like have, playing a game of chicken with a grenade. So, he's always been kind of reckless and weird. So this is at the very end of the of the Nazi occupation of France. Um, we find out that essentially the, what the history the history goes forward. Um, issue four will be after the occupation. Well, they still haven't caught this guy. So um, pretty great book. This is historical, so it's pretty fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Next, you have a lot less to say about that than you do. <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean, it's historical book. There's only so much you can say. I mean, it's it's happened before, so. I'm doing a thing. Okay. So, Crone, number four. Really good. Wow, really good. Yeah. Um, so, Bliss is captured. She knows who the guy is. And she's just mad at Gaspar. Oh, God. It's Gaspar knew the whole time. Didn't tell him. I mean, she. It's, she's like, he's like, she, why didn't you tell me? He, will you help me? No. Well, that's why I didn't tell you. So, 
Uh, of course, Gaspar's you know children have all been murdered by this guy now, and it's like he's literally watching him torture, watching children. Vor torture one of his children with a knife. Yeah, cutting it's, pieces out. It's of horrible. Him. So Bliss, you know, you see the backstory. Bliss happened between her and Vor that that they did have a night of kind of they had a drunken romp together, and but she meant nothing. And she wasn't interested. You also find out what actually happened to him, to Bliss's love. Vor, Vor happened. Vor happened. Vor yeah. happened. Vor basically tried to kind of seduce her. Didn't happen. She was trying to teach Bliss a lesson, decided to go back, and then Vor murders her. Just to punish Bliss. Which is why she's been on a mountain by herself. Which, you know, that's the only... And I don't want to... It's not a criticism, but I don't think that character just waits there. I think that Red Sonia esque eventually goes looking for her, and I think at some point she did go looking for her. You think so? You think we'll find that in the next issue? I think we'll find out. Yes, Bliss did go looking for her, couldn't find her, and then just sort of say, "Well, I deserve what I got." It yeah. just goes back to the cat. So we so, did. By the way, we, we did an interview. Yeah, with Dennison uh, and uh, and uh, Justin, Justin Greenwood, phenomenal, yeah. super nice guys. We'll actually have the interview up at, short, at some point shortly. It was almost as if listening to you and I had we made a comic. It was like, <laughs> here are all the things I love in comics. Oh man, these two—they clearly yeah, was, were very, was, very good friends, and it's—it's really—it's yeah. fun to listen to because I'm—I'm sure that Matt Fraction and Chip Zarsky are the exact same way. That they're very close friends who've been doing this for a while and legitimately love each other's company. These two, uh, they. They just love hanging out. You can yeah. tell. So they go to cons together and it's fun. So, yeah. DC. Batman 88. Yeah. Woo! Now, did Penguin die or not? Do we, do we know? Penguin didn't die. Well, I mean, at the end, it looked like he was going to die. He kept got telling his, Bruce he not got to... His, he got his throat cut, for sure. Death, Deathstroke uh, literally just... I gives mean, him just, the, the Cuban necktie. Um, so we find out that the designer is real. We find out that he has been pulling strings for a long time, but little bits in here, little bits here and there, just to just to come to this ultimate culmination, and that Bruce Wayne is the ultimate target. Yeah, they're going to kill Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Which, I don't know how that's the perfect crime, but... I don't either, because... But the brilliant thing in here is you find out that Riddler, Joker, Penguin, Catwoman. and Catwoman planned this with the among designer. Other, among others. There's got to be more, because it couldn't be just them. I'm sure Bane may have been involved. And too. so, so no, Bane wasn't involved. This is pre-Bane. This is pre-Bane. This okay. is pre This is way back. I have no question. This oh, is pre-Nightfall. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's good back. So they they go out and um, Catwoman's digging up the body of Joker. Joker. One of the Jokers. And this, looking like uh, Bruce Wayne's character, Bruce Wayne, Bruce Willis's character from Unbreakable. These guys in rain poncho show oh, yeah. up. And start throwing dirt back into the grave. Well, they smack her in the head. They knock her out. Yeah, or try and, to knock her out. And and the Joker's body talks to her. Right. Is there? Did you see this green foam coming out as if it's speech? And it's the designer. Now, is it the designer or is it Joker? I don't think it's Joker. I think it's the designer. The this, I think it's Joker. You think it's one of the Jokers? Yes. So here's the and, here's, and so if you've been reading along with Batman, the epilogue for issue eighty five was the basically the Joker saying, or one of his minions saying to him, hey, you know Bruce, or you know Batman's real secret identity. That may not last long because of Superman revealing his big right. I'm Clark Kent thing. Batman may out himself any day. Right. And so we should act on this while there's time. And then through 86 and 87 in each epilogue, there's been Joker doing a thing, and in 87, he executed all of the men who had worked on the project. Right. That is clearly an alive Joker. I want to say, from memory, that it was a purple-suited Joker. Yeah. And then we find a darker purple-suited Joker that is very definitely dead. Now, that could just be a body double that he wanted to let... You know them think that they were well, dead, but well, maybe but it the, means Catwoman knows that at some point in time that Joker was dead. But maybe this is the Jack Napier Joker. Maybe this is original. Because here's the thing: we all know from from Metal now what happens when someone kills Joker. It releases a toxin that should that for whoever kills him becomes Joker. That's sort of the bat who laughs. That's that's who we have now. So maybe this is the next Joker that came after. 
you know, maybe this is that next Joker. So we don't know. Or uh, or not. I mean, there, Or it's there's... Joker from another timeline has survived these multiple convergence events that have happened. Or not. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. That's the, there's, there's just all know. the... Yeah, that's the, that's the best thing about these books is you don't know. I love... And, and we didn't really get a Tom King Joker run. No. no throughout his entire... And maybe that's why... I am so in love with this because I am. Kind well, Joker of in was love in the Jokers Jokes and Riddles, but I mean, but not. Really. Yeah, it was about him fighting Riddler, not him fighting Batman. Right, exactly. And yeah, and if and if I'm going to call him the younger Joker because that's the way he appears to me. Sure. The the lighter purple suit. If if the guy in the grave was the original, this is his successor. The successor knows who Batman is, right? And is perhaps trying to protect him from the design. I, that's all I'm saying. That's weird. Talk about your thing. Green I got Lantern. this. I bought this too. Green Lantern facsimile number. Green number one facsimile. Wow. And and I don't care for Hal Jordan, but I think that's a, a really cool key issue. So it, it's hanging on my wall. Yeah, this is a this is a fun issue. There's two stories in here. It's interesting. It used to be bigger, and they had two stories instead of having one. And the actual original ads are in here. It's it's goofy, and but it does have a retelling of what happened with Abin Sur and all that. So this is it's pretty fun. This is a good read. So. Uh, goofy one dog. of those books that neither of us could probably afford. Oh, it's a fifteen thousand dollars book. So. Yeah, yeah, no way. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of of Joker identities, mm-hmm. this is very. I call it Dexter in the DCU. Sure, um, I can accept that. Yeah, it, it it very much. It's a it's a crime comic. Yeah. Um, I don't know that it necessarily has anything at all to do with, with Joker and Harley well, Quinn this is supposed so to be, far. This is supposed to be its own universe. But the interesting thing is I think it may be telling us the names of one of the Jokers. Yeah. John Layman. John Layman, yeah. If it is, in fact, John Layman and not his dad. I mean, we really kind of still don't know who he is. The, the, the thought process is it's John, who looks like the crow mm-hmm. and... The crow? Yeah. The crow and Justin... Timberlake as a yeah as a, <laughs> Justin Timberlake as the crow playing Joker really really creepy read it gets further and further from the comic books um, but it's really good I mean it's this is it's this good. is showing it's, a much nicer much much better version of Harley yeah you start to see the backstory I mean this this is the this is the what the Joker looks like I mean I'm sorry the people on podcast can't hear it but the people online doing YouTube can see. So it's, for those of you just listening, go to YouTube and check out the Print and Panel podcast, yeah. and you can see this picture. So, but it's creepy. It's it's anyway. So, uh, enjoy the book. I'm really interested to see where it's going to go. This is nine parts, right? Speaking of which, let's just okay for those of you on YouTube. If you ever go in and, and read a comic in in a shop without buying it, this is what you're doing to it. Yeah. This not lay flat thing. Now, a bagging board will fix this. Of course. And over time, a little pressure, it'll fix it. But when you pick up a graphic novel in Barnes & Noble and you thumb through it and you stick it back on the shelf, That's right. if you thumb gently, you're fine. But if you if you sit and crack the spine and read, you get you get that. And that's not new, man. That sucks. Not that there's anything wrong with it because it's your comic. It's my but, comic. Yeah, but I'm exactly. saying for, for no, no, if no, I pick no. that up in the in the store, I'm like, hey man, you need to get on your customers. They suck. That is a common problem at LCS is that we have to kind of say, hey, by the way, please don't read this all the way through. <laughs> it's not a library, and you have to, you hate to you hate to say stuff like that, but it's real. It's like you know, hey, listen, this is our stuff. Please don't do this. Just I just need my own shop so I can just backhand people when yeah. they start doing this big right hand. We're going to ask him not to do you that. Lied to you, you lied to me. You lied to me. You said Tomasi wrote this. I thought I did. Venetti. Oh, Venditti. 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 Ah, uh, Venditti. I thought it was Tomasi. So, oh, well. guys, I was. I said I wasn't going to do Justice League after issue 39 because I love Scott Snyder. I am a Scott yeah, Snyder did, junkie. Did, did, um, detective comics. What are you talking about? Okay. Okay, so, yeah. It's just really good. Yeah. Um... Compared to where issue 39 left off, I was very, very pleased. But 39 left off, and then where's the in between that and this? <laughs> I mean, knows. nothing. Not a damn thing. Yeah. It's like, what? What, ha- what happened? Um, but yeah, it was good. I mean, this this all new, this this guy, this, this Daxamite comes, and, and it's like, hey, by the way, the Eradicator has come to my planet, and he's converted all the Daxamites <laughs> The whole thing was about Kryptonians. The whole thing was about the Eradicator, but they kept saying Daxamite, and all I kept thinking is, "Who's the black private <laughs> sex machine with all the Dax?" Uh, <laughs> only it, that's not Dolomite. That was Shaft. But, Shaft, but yes, I was right. dying. I was like Dolomite. Dolomite. Yes. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
So, of course, Superman is, of course, You mad. have no idea why I'm turning him sideways. Now you're just mimicking No, why are you doing it? I, I'm not going to tell you until Fine, the end. Don't tell me then. Fine. You're going to see if the stat gets it's smaller. secret. No, yeah. One more from DC for me. Young Justice, number 13. I really enjoyed this series. This is not indicative of what's actually going on. con is not being turned into Warlord. <laughs> <laughs> I had this discussion. I, I hate lying cover art. Yeah, but well, that's we, awesome cover art. It is Warlord Reborn. We haven't seen Warlord in a long... I think it's been at least 15 or 20 years since we've seen Warlord in his own book. So Convergence. Might see, a, yeah, might see a Warlord again at some point. Did so. you all hear the disgust? Yeah. <laughs> Convergence. Yeah. Secret Crisis. Secret Crisis. Maybe... maybe is Spider-Boy still in there? Oh, no. Spider-Boy was just that one panel. That one shot. Just that one oh, panel. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of dumb. We're, we're, we're finding all the... The breadcrumbs, the secret crisis. <laughs> I think we might be making some up as we go. <laughs> Vengeance of Vampirella number five. Um, this actually tells the origin stories of Hemorrhage. Oh, um, wow. And, yeah, that's pretty much what went on during the whole book. She she then breaks his neck. Cool. Nice. Uh, moving on. I enjoyed it. It's good. Isola number 11. So, who's been paying attention to the Isola book? Which, I don't know if you have or not. All but... three of you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, fantastic book. She's finally getting closer to to uh, helping her queen, but she, she wakes up in the dark, and the witch has, has basically taken over, and the witch now is um, is her is her queen, and um, yeah. Is it, did you miss something? No, I noticed something. What? Um, image and dynamite have taken their barcodes off the front of their covers. Oh yeah. To where they're they're not quite virgin. Mm -hmm. I mean, like technically a virgin cover wouldn't have the the logo. Right. But but they're they're. They're, they're, they're giving, virgin esque. They're, they're getting rid of the barcode on the yeah. front cover. Because I really like that. What they're doing is they're making their covers more attractive. Yeah. Taking that one thing off. So this one doesn't. Kind of like your shirt, making the covers more attractive. Hey, nice. See, yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah. yeah. So and the hell the the issue number is even on here. So anyway, good book. I've enjoyed seeing this. Can I kind of see where it goes from here? So uh, yeah. If you're not reading Crowded, like mm. Garen, you're a boob. So um, I have been convinced to read Crowded. So have you really? Yes. Oh, that makes me so happy. So now I'm going to read it because it's going to be a show now too. So, so I really want to read, kind of see where it goes. So I want to call it. How, how do I want to sum it up? I've always wanted to write the little blurbs before movies, or like, a, or, or like to recommend a book. Um, <laughs> two lesbians fight to save one another as one has a crowdsourced assassination. Death, the death wish. Yeah. yeah, it's like. It's so good. Um, this this issue, um, Vita has gotten her and Charlie into a cult that lives in an abandoned nuclear silo, and the it tells the backstory of how Vita knows um, the the girl who's in charge of the cult. Abandoned is in like the nuclear missiles going to. Yeah. Okay. Just, just making sure. Okay, it's just, just a nice good. shaft. Just in a the shaft. Ground. Okay. Nice. And uh, and and they they only hooked up like two issues ago, and now they're having their first big fight because Charlie is just an awful human being, and you have. You start to realize that you would contribute to the campaign to have her killed. It's now at three million <laughs> bucks, um, and and I really thoroughly enjoy it. Just like it, it is probably a book that. If 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 you stuck to like, I am in a certain demographic. It was a book that that statistically isn't aimed at me, but God, it's one of my favorites. So you think ultimately she's going to be killed? No, <laughs> no, no. Vita's never going to let that happen. She's a badass. Manifest Destiny number forty. One. What was up with the dog? <laughs> I know. Out of nowhere, this dog has not been in the last nope. forty issues at nowhere. all. The dog nope. named Seaman. Yep. The dog is sitting there with her. With, with Sacagawea. Sacagawea. Um, yeah, so <laughs> they finally reveal. They just threw a dog into the book that's yeah. never been there. But they've been on a voyage of discovery Apparently across the Apparently the dog has been there. We just didn't know it. I, well, but maybe they, they named the dog for the first time. Maybe they did. So uh, they finally. I want to talk to these guys. The Oh, God, Lord, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. So what's interesting is um, they finally reveal the, the, uh, the ghost. Who's been tormenting? Oh no no no! It's it, it, don't don't softball it in like that. So the ghost Maldonado has been working Lewis and Clark individually, trying to convince them to kill, kill each, each other. other. He's been doing it for for a year, yeah. and somehow he, who is a real ghost, yeah, not connected to an archway, nope. he has not picked up on the fact that that they're writing journals about this. They're writing to journals other. to each other, 
basically sharing what's going on in code. Yes. Um, that Maldonado is trying to turn them against each other. And, and these guys are not bring, stupid. They're they're very intelligent. These are these are extremely intelligent individuals. They bring Madame Boniface into it, and then she can see him. Right. And they're like, listen, like, whoa, where did you come from? I mean, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> But like, listen, you know, uh, you've been, I am, I am the, I'm the ghost. Yeah, like, you've been trying to play us against each other all this time. It's not going to work. From yeah. now on, you're just going to give us good intelligence. Yeah. So now they've got a ghost in the party, and all, apparently, all the <laughs> just, men just, just who, who went to <laughs> to to make whoopee with the women who then turned into rabbits, wear rabbits, wear rabbits, which is one of the most terrifying <laughs> damn things I have ever seen in a comic book. <laughs> I won't wear rabbits in every D and D campaign now. I'm working on the stats for them now, and they are all going to be female, and they eat their mates. I mean, it's just such a thing. That Olympia face. number three. Yes, number three. Olympia yeah. number three. Yes. <laughs> Don't try to read so many comics. Both of us are like, "What am I on?" So, um, so you see the backstory of the creator of this Olympia character. You see him. Essentially, basically having to go from doing well to almost being destitute because his main character gets completely shafted by image. Uh, <laughs> Does it really take a direct shot at image? <laughs> it takes a shot at itself. That's right. <laughs> That's um, awesome. So, but then of course the the guy like has the guy's already lost custody of his son. He's the, the the wife is remarried. And he brings the only prototype of Olympia to his kid for the birthday. The birthday. He's like, this is amazing. It's like, I know it's it's one of a kind. <laughs> and of course, he, this guy knows at some point he's going to kill himself. He knows. Oh, wow. So he's about to kill himself and the kid appears with Olympia. And he passes out. <laughs> That's where we are. Great book. Really great book. Uh, Sounds very meta. I, I kind of... It is very meta. It really is very much very much comic books looking in on itself and, and how really comic book create... And this, this, here's the thing, guys. If you don't know this already, please hear me. Comic book creators, owners, writers, um, artists, they're not rich. None of them are. Well. The, Stan Lee was the only one who, who saw wealth toward the end because... Life filled with the Deadpool movies got some money. If you, McFarlane if, has some money. Um, McFarlane, yes. Probably more like Kirkman is probably the most at this point because of Walking we, Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey man, that's we need a Forbes list of comic creators. Yeah, that would be interesting. There, here's the thing: most of these guys, I mean, I've met Peter David, who lost almost all his money because he got cheated by his uh, by his accountant. And I mean, you, you meet these guys, and they're when when they say, "Listen, I'm going to charge you for comics," they literally are, they have to because they that's how they make money. Um, so yeah, yeah, dude, don't don't dicker with somebody who's trying to get you to pay 20 bucks for an autograph they they, they mean to do that for yeah, lunch so. i mean it's it, and and when we have those cons that are in new york and think about the cost of them having to front their own hotel room well they don't have to do that some of them do man really yeah oh wow i mean like if you and i were to go to to dragon's con or, or heroes con yeah. or something like that and and be the printed panel and not just be fanboys oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're gonna pay for our own hotel room i mean nobody's gonna be looking for our autograph but well we are the printed panel and we are fanboys so <laughs> right i mean we would be there to be like hi come sit with us and talk but but at the same time yeah. If I ever publish the 900 things I've got on my list to publish, I'm probably going to be begging for autographs like anybody else. Yeah. All right, so we went with Marvel. This is our, this is our big one here. So God, there is so much Marvel. I, I so wait a minute before you tell me about this, because we talked a little bit about it, and I've already heard your opinion. I'm going to say there's an indicator on here on the quality of this book. Like, aim scientists. Oh, the aim. Yeah. Yeah. It, when when they're they're when, morons. They really are when, morons. When aim scientists, it really is not fair. These guys are just dumb. Yeah. Well, so aim at one point in time was pretty, pretty serious, and and now they've become Bob from Hydra's yeah. retarded cousin Bob. So, so this is the the typical Ant Man that we know. Uh, this is the one from the movies. This is Ant Man. Um, he and his daughter are now kind of become. So he's not really a hero anymore. He's become a hero for hire. He's dead broke. His security agency didn't work. And the whole time I, I'm hearing, uh, what's his name from the Ant Man movies? Paul Rudd. Man. Paul Rudd, yeah, because he was fantastic. Um, so <clears throat> he doesn't have a home anymore. So he lives in an ant hill <laughs> with, with with ants who kept talking to him, saying, "You know, stop being violent. You know, be nice. You smell like Pam." I mean, just hilarious. Uh, so basically. This woman comes to her, works from the Everglades, and she says, hey, you know, all the bees are gone, and we can't figure out what's happened to them. And he's like, I kind of know, I think, what happened. And he flies a giant, <laughs> giant ant over to where the beehives are. 
shrinks down and finds Swarm. We all know who Swarm is. Swarm's been around for a long time. I don't know who Swarm is. That was a a Superman villain. He's made of... Superman villain? I'm sorry, Superman. Spider-Man villain made of bees. Bees! Made of bees. What's happened is the Swarm (coughs) has essentially co-opted all the bees he can find. It's like, these are bees who are taken against against their will. They want to go back to their hive. He's like, okay, guys, we're going back to the hive. No, you can't do that. You can't take them. So they get in a fight, and then you see these three new villainous creatures. And um, essentially, that's that's what the plot line is going to be from here on out. Um, I do like the fact that in all these books, the Strange Academy is... <laughs> they put, like, that's your, eight that's pages of... Sp- yeah, so... I like Strange... I, I'm actually going to read Strange Academy. It looks interesting. So this was pretty good. Yeah, thanks. So, sure. I mean, not pretty good. It was all right, so... I sincerely doubt I read more. What they are not telling you about Conan Battle for the Serpent Crown is that it is a follow-up to Doctor Strange's Dam- Damnation. Yes. The only criticism I have for this book is that we don't have a single narrative because Ghost Rider took Mephisto out of the hotel in that line. Now, this could happen before, but Mephisto, basically the machinations of Mephisto has brought Conan to Vegas with the intention of having him destroy... The crew. The, the, well, destroy the prison that's holding Mephisto. Oh, yeah. Which is really fun. But the thief that is helping Conan is uh, part of the group that, that had all the things go wrong trying to steal from Champion right. in, in Damnation. Right. Which was a really, really great read. Yep. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's very... If you didn't read Damnation, you missed a good political poem, especially after a Secret yeah. Empire. It was... Yeah. It was it's a horrible, horrible idea to bring bring this old city back to life. <laughs> like well, they're, all in, they're all in hell, but let's bring them back. But but Doctor Strange was in a weird place. <laughs> he was weird. He's place. in a weird place right now, but he he was definitely in a weird place. All right, Daredevil. This is actually issue number seventeen. This is him kind of getting his mojo back. Um, Electra has he like to have stolen billions worth billions of dollars from the Stormwinds, and she took half for herself, and the rest she literally. Gave away to everyone with a bank account in all of Hell's Kitchen. People that had nothing now have hundreds of thousands of dollars in their bank account. Man, that's so electric. It's very that much electric. That is electric. so electric. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, he basically goes to the, the mother of the, the boy he killed in, in issue number two, accidentally. And she says, listen, I know you did it. I know who you really are. I know you're Daredevil. And I'm sorry, but I forgive you. Because you didn't mean to do it. It was clearly an accident. You're a hero. And, of course, now he breaks down, knowing full well what's happened. Um, the Stormwinds know, essentially, that he is one of the people that did this, but they don't know who he is. They don't know his identity. They don't know he's Daredevil. They don't know it's Matt Murdock. But now they want to try to take him down. So they're trying to punish Hell's Kitchen. So, good story. Apparently, uh, issue 21, I've seen the sneak preview issue 21, where he gets his red suit back. The full red suit. Nothing... Extra, it's the, 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 the real fun, cool suit back. So he'll be Daredevil again. I like that they've put the black suit with the cowl and all that into yeah. the comics so that... You have the crossover heard, from the show. I've heard Charlie Cox is going to actually be Peter Parker's attorney in the next Spider-Man movie, right. which would finally bring that universe into the mainstream, which well, then gets them was. to Disney+. Plus. It and, always was, which we knew, but there was no there was no other connectors. They didn't really right. have anything. Like with Punisher, there's no nothing them talking about other than... I mean, John Barrestall the in the main <clears throat> new, oh my God. Yeah. And the only problem with that is, is right now we don't have Steve Rogers as Captain America to kind of smack him around and put him in place. So I think what would be fun is if we had... <clears throat> the new Captain America, U.S. agent as Captain America and Winter Soldier, we're going to see that. He'll be the Cap until he gets goes crazy and gets taken away and he'll be yeah. Winter Soldier, U.S. agent. But anyway, so, boom. Dark Agnes. Dark Agnes. Good book. Really good book. Becky Clune did an excellent job. ATN is the most ridiculously <laughs> fun character. Um, I'm going to say Becky Clune, and thank you so much. I, I really thoroughly enjoy Dark Agnes. It gives a little bit of her origin, yeah. but, but not so much you're bogged down in it. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, she is an amazing character. There's a fun read. And really, I got kind of inspired to, to work on a project that I've kind of had on halt by the ATN character. Just just his tongue-in-cheek. Mr. Etienne. He's, uh, yeah, he's like, oh, I didn't do that. <laughs> he has his head. I'm going to get his head so, chopped so off. They like, I did that. Him, yeah, I did that. They accuse him of a bunch of <laughs> crimes, including gossip. I love that gossip was a crime. 
And they get to murder, and he's like, well, you know, I did seduce his wife, but... I think she really liked it. But yeah, uh, like, yeah. I don't see how it's a crime she was into it. Dr. Doom. Yeah, tragic cover, but fantastic book. <laughs> <laughs> the poor Gwen Stacy cover. Now, so whatever cover artist did this, it really is beautiful. I mean, it's it's a well-drawn cover. So I keep my but, books... But why is a Fantastic Four on the cover? That's a, we don't see because, that Well, Fantastic Four because Doom. Yeah, but... but but why Gwen Stacy? Oh, yeah, exactly. Because we're getting ready to do a Gwen Stacy series, and, and, and I it get comes it. Out but next week, so. but yeah. Doom decides <laughs> that to bring about these visions in his head, he needs to find find this woman of his dreams. Yeah, literally the woman of his dreams. And, and she's she's cloud seeding. Yes. To to change weather patterns yeah. and cool the planet and do all this fun stuff. And he goes to her, and she's like, "No, I won't marry well, you." First of all, she imprisoned my father. She buried. She she bows to him, of course, because out that's of her fear. Out of out of fear, and he says, "No, no, 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 never, never you, never you." And then she's she says, "You know, you you imprisoned my father for life." It's like well, you deserved it. And she, she's <laughs> she, like, "I'm never going to marry she you." She basically's like, "You're a, you're a mass murdering dickhead. Get away from yeah, me." Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, she's. And he's like, "Well, clearly, I was having a rough moment, and I should have just killed the guy. Then shouldn't yeah. I?" Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what a woman who you're seducing wants to hear. I should have killed your father when I had the chance. So, so then Kang reappears with his armor, with Doom's armor, and now he's back to being Doom again. So now he's going to go back and take some revenge. <laughs> Kang, Kang is somehow the hero of the story, which is fun. <laughs> he just he just pings into reality. He's like, oh yeah, you know, if I give you this armor at this place in this time. Then you pacify the entire world, making it very easy for is me it to come. Marvel or Silver Sable, the one that just kills one of the all, kings. <laughs> all I know is Herbie. <laughs> Herbie the murder droid. Um, so the I am president. authorized for lethal lethal force. You probably I, ought to stop. So at the beginning, you see Blue Marvel standing outside Taskmaster's hospital room, and you see uh, this. You see basically Herbie standing coming out and going. Oh yeah, I talked to him. He's like, "What'd you have to get him to talk?" He's like, "Oh, I, I doused him with you know sodium pentothal." Sodium pentothal. It's like, "Oh, oh, true serum. Good call. Old school. Good call." So yeah, I, I, man, I love the fact that Blue Marvel is in this because I can't. Christopher Cantwell, I love you, man. Right, man. Just Fantastic. you're awesome. This this <sighs> talking who, who this wrote one too? this? Talking this one too, didn't I? It was this Tom, Tom Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, this is Spider Man <laughs> as Spider Man should be like. Tom Taylor. This you is can, Hulk as Hulk can, should be. This is take, this is take Fantastic over. Four as Fantastic Four should be. You can take over as uh, a writer for Spider Man anytime. We not just, a, not a Mortal Hulk. Not a, yeah. Sorry, not I'm Fantastic Four. Amazing. Not yet, but because Dan Slott's amazing. So, but ASM, you can take over anytime, buddy. Of course, it's Loki. Loki sees <laughs> Spider Man and Hulk fighting on a rooftop, and he goes, "None of that. I'm going to be a hero," <laughs> and zaps the Hulk out of Hulk <laughs> and into Spidey. Who, but who, he doesn't. He doesn't mean to take it away. He no, th- he thinks he's taking the Hulk away entirely. He literally says, "My bad." <laughs> <laughs> Loki, my bad. But then, of course, then he can't figure out how to put it back, and then so there. So so then Reed has to come along. So Reed comes along, and of course, here's Peter, and of course, they're like, and Bruce is like, "There's no way he can." figure that out it's like oh and they're like oh okay clearly he's a genius so it's like if you do this and carry the two and it's like okay he's a genius which i but bruce doesn't know who peter is because of because of uh, aunt may's death that yeah. what is that brightest one, one, one more day, day. one more day. day yeah which i've never read a great book um yeah P- so but the hulk knows bruce of course of course Fantastic Four. They all know who Peter really is, obviously. But, well, but he's revealed himself to them. Yeah, but uh, but no, and but Hulk remembers. Yeah, and and when the, when he when they finally get Hulk back into Banner, he talks to him. He says, "You stayed with Banner." Though he's like, "Well, if he's my friend." He says, "No one's ever done that for Banner before." Thank you. And he says, "But Peter." He's like, wait, wait, you know my name? He's like, of course I know your name. Yeah. I'm the Hulk. <laughs> like, like, it's a, that, I'm always here. This so this was a this was a great kind of bridge. Book. This was this is a fun book. It's well told. I'm glad. This done. story as an as an insular story encapsulates a really fun part of the Marvel universe. Yeah. Like it is so well done. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't a bunch of issues. Yeah, no. just a single but, shot. It's all needed. But yes, yeah. Peter hulking out and it being an issue that Bruce put his pants back on <laughs> was just so. Wait, where my pants come from? You put my pants back on me, didn't you? So of course, Peter. Someone had to put your pants back on. All right. So let me God. let me fuss first. And I'm gonna I'm gonna address this directly to Jerry Dugan, who I promise isn't listening to our podcast. But if somebody can bring it to his attention, but Jerry, we love you. 
We love Wilson you. Dickler, you're phenomenal, so we love you. We love you, and you're you're an amazing writer, and I would not have this book in anyone else's hands. Yeah. But almost as if to, to speak to the fans about the name Marauders, we get this entire issue. Of Marauders. <laughs> where, Callisto. <laughs> where, where Callisto shows back up. And somehow she doesn't have the, the multiple arms anymore. That's just weird. She, that's not. She never had multiple arms. That's spiral. No, no. She had like the the squid arms. Calista no. did. No. Yeah, she did. When? I don't know. Sometime. No. She could throw the knives. I'm I'm telling you, she had like squid arm You're... things. And the spiral's different though. Spiral's yeah. from Mojoverse. I know that. Yeah. All right. So anyway, <laughs> Jerry, you did two things with this. The first thing you did was really hit us in the feels with the whole Lockheed thing. Because now we don't know what's going on with Kitty. And you know, we don't know that if this was a whole... Dead, that, that, we know that there was a whole issue about Kitty that we don't know what's going on. And if you do it for one more issue, that's okay. <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> but but this was genius. Well told. Emma Frost brings in Callisto as the White Knight. Yeah. And... She is the White Knight. She legitimately is. Perfect for the role. Perfect for the role. Yeah. And and what a combination of characters all working for Emma. Emma, her son, uh, Kate, yeah. and then Callista. And, and, and the great part is her throwing the knife at Storm's head, who calmly catches it, and then they hug. Like, <laughs> like it's nice seeing you, bitch. Yeah, it's yeah. nice seeing you, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, I don't get how women can do that. We don't show up and like punch each other in the face and then hug. It's like we're like, "Hey, man, miss you. Hadn't seen you in a while." You know, all or, of three days, or, or, or just not talk to somebody. Right? Yeah. yeah. Typical guy thing. So, Savage Avengers Zero. So Dugan technically didn't write most of this. Well, okay. So, to be fair, what's clever about this is the beginning and the end. So right. basically, Strange goes to goes to uh, uh, Krakoa. Krakoa. I said Genosha. I know he's coming out, Genosha. But goes to Krakoa, and of course... He isn't welcome. You no, know, he's not. He's not. But what's interesting is that they're like, hey, listen, you can't be here. It's like, well, I'm not standing on the island. So he literally... <laughs> he's he's in the air, in the air. So it's like... Um, so he says, I'm not standing here. I'm, I'm, I'm just here. So he's wanting to see magic. Magic appears, and he says, we have a problem. Kulan Goth has reappeared. And then you go through an entire retelling of Kulan Goth's origins in the marvel universe right. and it was all post um new asgard or the asgardian trip where the uncanny x-men were kind of taken yeah. storm becomes the goddess and yeah. blah, blah 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 blah. it was a great story in fact yeah. it's one of those i don't think i ever read originally and maybe i did and just had forgotten because it's been so long but well done this was a good book and of course they put claremont as the as the writer on this one because it was Cla it was claremont's Claremont story. story so yeah. that's pretty neat yeah so He's uh he's still doing stuff and he's what, 85 years old or something. So yep, yeah, he's getting up there. Love Chris Claremont. So normally, I, I think in a regular book, I would have been really pissed off at having a uh, droid as the sl comedy relief slash narrator. Because this would happen. The, the the droid. There's this new droid that comes on. This is immediately after. Uh, Luke has been rescued. This is this is right after. So basically, it's concurrent with the current Star Wars new line, which is fantastic. It's the first time they've done this with Vader. So Vader's now pissed because he can't get his son back with him. Oh no 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 no! Let's go deeper than that. This is the moment, and having seen the prequels and knowing what's going on in the Star Wars universe, this adds the pain of Vader realizing, I have a son who survived the death of Padme. And he's been kept from me. And on top of that, he's been made weak. Right. And so he sets out on a mission to go find out how this happened and to punish the people responsible. Well, Obi before he can do Obi -Wan this. Obi-Wan is this, already dead. So he, he goes he goes on this mission and, of course, he finds out. Well, he gets this droid that, that goes, on, goes on the mission with him. because, And, of course, he, he tortures the droid and says, If you reveal any of this to anyone, you will self-destruct. Oh, well, that's nice to have motivation. <laughs> I mean, just, yeah, this was really good. Um, very, very, very good book. Um, and he, the and the giant reveal at the end. So basically, as he's gone through Tatooine, he goes oh back yeah. to Coruscant. He breaks into Amidala's quarters. But but wait, the best part is we see Jar Jar getting killed. He's a rebel. We see is it Jar Jar? No, it was just a Gungan. It's a Gungan. It could have been Jar Jar. You didn't know. You didn't see him die. Oh, damn. 
You didn't see yeah, him die. Didn't see him die. Mother. It was the wrong color to be Jar Jar, I think. It was gray because everything was gray because it wasn't dark. It no, wasn't dark. it was not gray. It was yellow. You can open that issue and look. Anyway, Jar Jar's more of a mauve or a <laughs> more of a mauve color. A, a peach. Uh, peach. <laughs> I'm not going to count my. I'm not going to review those because. But at the end, we see Padme. Yeah. Or what looks, what looks to be Padme. Just like Padme. But can it be Padme? And and to and, and so in my brain, because one of the things I love about these is that the actors are voicing. Mm-hmm. In my brain, for the very first time, Vader, not Anakin, just becoming Vader, mm-hmm. is. You know, you hear James Earl Jones say, "Where is Padme?" Mm-hmm. Um, in this in this time. I heard it in, in Hayden Christensen's voice, and then you yeah. go, "Oh no, no, he wouldn't have Hayden Christensen's voice." And, and that's when I, you realize you're really immersed in a story. Greg Pak snuck one in on me that I was not expecting. Now, did you read the thing at the end? So there's a, there's a blurb at the end where basically the editor is talking about how they've been huge fans ever since they were little kids, and they're like talking about Greg Pak taking over and how this was been his his dream for a long time. So, yeah, if you get this book, please read the little blurb at the end. It's fantastic, too. You have one more book than me. We have three more to go, and I'm not saying that really loud so that Heather hears it and gets ready to come <laughs> press the button. Or no, anything. we're not no. talking about Heather coming over no. here and kids pressing the stop button. No. Nah. We wouldn't be doing that. And so the guys got together for the wire fighting. <laughs> <clears throat> so, X-Men Fantastic Four. This was really good. Um, I... I had some issues with how it proceeded, but I'm really interested to okay, see so, where it goes. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about this, and I really should have done this beforehand because this may extend our segment a bit long, but I'm betting you didn't like the way Reed and Sue reacted. No, not at all. That was very much not Reed and Sue. So, I, all right. So, first of all, they, the, the mutants have been like, listen, we need to get Franklin here. We need to figure out why his powers are draining. We need to rescue him. Kitty, you're friends with him. You've been friends with him for a very long time. Let's go talk to him. And Kitty's like, "We sure he'll see me?" She's like, "They're like, well, he's kind of in love with you, so <laughs> he thinks you're awesome." So yes, say so go. And of course, immediately the Fantastic Four get mad. Uh, they're like, "No, no, no, no! You you can't take him away." It's like we're not trying to take him away. We're literally trying to cure him and help him. Why don't you let us help him? And then you find out that Reed has been thinking about this for a long time. Reed knows. Reed also chipped his son. <laughs> So that he would not display mutant, his mutant powers. He cannot pass through the Krakoan gates. Well, he passed through them, but he goes right through them. This is what I understand, though. Why did he jump through it and Kitty got hit in the face? Why? I think that I think this may be some of why Kitty can't go through. I think that there is something larger going on with Kitty. I think she's half human? No. No, I think maybe somehow she's been manipulated, maybe in curing her mm. of the time that she was going discorporeal, which it talks about way, in here. This is, clearly happens before Kitty becomes one of the big Marauders, or before this, before issue six of Marauders. Maybe, maybe it's after. We don't know. So, we don't know. Uh, but it's fantastic. It was well done, and now we're going to see kind of what happens now because even though he's forbidden, he still runs away. Now, this is the conversation that Larry, I want to have. This is this is where I was going. Sue actually says, I would have killed him before I let him take my son. She talks about killing them. Yes. I think that Sue is is put to a place that if you're going to take her kids away, she will kill. Right. Take is the dip, Take is the big thing. They weren't trying to take him. They literally were saying, listen. If you want to come, we're here. We're giving you the choice. Yeah. The, the, the gate's open. Please come with us. Or they're saying to Reed, please let, him, let us take him with us so we can fix what's going on. And, and they said you can come too. And here's my argument. Yeah. Reed, for years, had the ability to fix the thing. No, he didn't. Bull. You think he's been trying to fix... You think he knows how I to think, fix his son? I think, that, I think that he knows how to fix his son, and I think he knows how to fix Ben, and doesn't. Because well, We know being, he can fix Ben, because he can fix Ben for... One day, ben has, one has, week has, a has year. One, week, one day a year. Yeah, one day. week a year. One week a year. Yeah. One week he gets a year. to be Ben a, a week a year. Yeah. And he's choosing not to, to keep him part of the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. That's evil on the level of the maker. The maker is Reed. Yeah. To gone to his extremes. Reed is not always a good guy. Just like Xavier's not always a good guy. Oh no, like Magneto's Xavier, no, no. not always a good guy. No, well, Xavier, I would have said Magneto's never been a good guy until right now. I would have <laughs> said Invisible Woman probably would not have crossed that line. But then I thought about it. And I'm like, as a parent, oh, you want to take my child away to a place I can't go? No, nah, I'm oh, killing no. you. Uh, You're dead. Yeah, you, that's one thing. Talk you about your thing. Take about Jacob or Roland. No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Adler by Titan Comics. This is clearly a Sherlock Holmes-ish story. Mm-hmm. It's Irene Adler. 
Uh, it's also Jane Eyre. Because <laughs> because you can. Because you can. Uh, because Jane was about the same time. Jane fought in the Boer Wars. Well, pardon me. She was a nurse in the Boer Wars. And anyway, so and of course Irene is just like Sherlock, just a, a female version of Sherlock Holmes. She she has the same abilities he does. Same you know, attention to detail. Uh, and of course, for some reason, there's a Wonder Woman character in here. It's an Amazonian princess. I'm not joking. So, um, and of course, um, who is the villain? Moriarty, of course. Uh, so, a good story. I mean, I really enjoyed it. And this is very much a girl power book, which is pretty cool. So, um, Titan is also doing the uh, Sherlock Holmes stuff right now too. Yeah. So, but it's the it's the BBC show with uh, right. with um, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. So, our Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. Is Batch? Batch. Okay, Batch. Okay. So, and I'm sorry for mispronouncing that, Benedict. Uh, you're a fantastic actor, so I apologize. It's, we're not calling you Cucumber Batch, so, which... Whoa! Uh, that would be rude. Whoa. We're not doing that. But as you've been called that, I know. I had no so, part in that. Uh, but this I is good. I associate with that entirely. So, um, this is a big new key, too. This is, like, a big thing. So, um, yeah. Adler, Titan Books. Money shot! Money shot! In order to save everyone, he has sex with a carbon-based life form. Silicon-based life Silicon based form. Silicon-based life form. We are carbon-based life We're, forms. Wow. So, <laughs> and it explodes. And they're going to have to have a mad orgy in issue five to save them all. Come on. So, Come on. This is a great book. It is a fantastic book. And, and the best part is the end where she feels like that all hope is lost. And and the other chick looks at her and says, "Hell no!" Makes out with her. Yeah, and he gives her a big old smooch and says, "Let's do this thing." Yeah, I mean, great book. This this really really, really been fun. I know for some people, this the nudity and all that it's it's, it's going to be weird, but I'm telling you, this is a fun book to read. So not for kids, but no, 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 no. All right, man. So I'm going to reveal what I've been sitting here doing with my side stacking and all of that. Now I got what you're doing. I see. You figured it out. I figured it out. You yeah. figured it out. Good job. So I'm going to say that my, our surprise of the week books had to come for me between The Man Who Effed Up Time and Justice League. Justice League didn't surprise me, but Man Who Effed Up Time was definitely a surprise. I did not think it would be that good. I got it kind of as like, a, okay, I love Aftershock. They do good work. Let's see where this goes. And it really was fantastic. It, it, it did surprise me. Like, oh, my God, this is better than I thought it was going to be. But it I, I picked Lehman. it up on the merits of John Lehman. Right. And... Was completely surprised at how much I enjoyed it, and I will have every issue of that, I promise. Yeah, it's a good book. So, last thing we got to do is Book of the Week, which is what I laid out here. You pick one, I'll pick one. Because those are my two favorites, too. So, I'm going to do Vader, you're going to do, do Batman? So. I mean, you're going to kick my tail, but you know what? I'm going to take the one that I actually enjoyed better. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm going to say my Book of the Week is Batman 88, and... Garen, I assumed you were taking Darth Vader. It was just that good. Yeah. Literally, it was that yeah. good. So, yeah. Um, Quickest we've ever done that. Uh, I would have said Doctor Doom, but I think uh, had Vader not been out, I would have been Doctor Doom. Because Doctor Doom was pretty amazing. I mean, you could take Doom. I just, no, but I, I, those but, were my predictions on what we were But Vader was just phenomenal. So, yeah, it was extremely it, it, it touched a fanboy note that I wasn't Ooh. expecting, that I was like, oh! <gasps> that's the point. Uh, that, but that's the point behind these books is that you want the fanboys to enjoy. You want something to go in between. Oh, and my prediction about Vader. Yes. It's it's one of her bodyguard doubles. Oh, Pi. That looks, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I hope it's the one played by Karen Knightley so that when they make this movie, I get to see more of Karen Knightley because I don't see enough of Karen Knightley. I, like that movie. I mean that literally. Yeah, she hasn't done much lately, has she? <laughs> no, I meant I want nudity. But anyway, oh, oh, <laughs> she could uh, she could be yeah. a money shot, and I'd be totally okay with that. They gotta do a money shot movie. They do need to do a money you know, shot. It should movie. be animated though. Anime money shot movie. Shh. I'm a live actor. <laughs> Although Chris Pratt would play <laughs> the bald guy, <laughs> and I'd be way uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Super black hole or whatever. The super, the super, the super massive um, black hole. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all so, right, guys. Uh, yeah, that's this is that's fun. February February fifth. Uh, yeah. Tune in for our February twelfth preview coming up. Yeah. And uh, keep reading. Keep Thanks, listening. Guys. Thanks for listening. Later.